He even ensured that Bose was elected president of the Indian National Congress Party. Now, about Gandhi, you have to remember, although he sounds like a saint, he's a politician. He's a master of raising money. He's a master of propaganda. He's a master of choosing men who will help him. But Bose became disillusioned with the lack of zeal amongst Congress leaders, like Jawaharlal Nehru, Gandhi's favorite political protege. Subhas publicly advocated the use of violence against the British. India is going to be free. Our struggle is no doubt a non-violent struggle. But even a non-violent struggle demands an army, an organization, and a machinery. Gandhi was shocked, and Bose was forced to resign. He rallied the radical Indian left around him and set up a new political party, the Forward Bloc. But events a long way from India were working against him. Der Großangriff auf London nimmt seinen Anfang. Britain was under attack by Nazi Germany. In August 1940, German bombers were flying raids against London. There was widespread talk of an imminent invasion. Britain's ultra-conservative new Prime Minister Winston Churchill advocated a tough hand in India, while the war in Europe was threatening the survival of Britain as an independent nation. Now wasn't the time to go soft on Indian nationalists. Churchill is a great war leader for Great Britain and a disaster for India. He talks about Indians in such an incredibly condescending, almost racist way that he is hated in India. Bose and his followers were arrested. The forward bloc movement came to a halt. Bose had undertaken a hunger strike in prison and the British did not want him to die on their hands and so had allowed him to go home with the intention of re-arresting him as soon as he regained his health. But Bose managed to escape. In disguise, he headed north. He then walked across the border into Afghanistan. His life was in great danger, as newly discovered documents prove. From London, an order went out to the Special Operations Executive in Istanbul and Cairo that they should wire what arrangements they could make for Shubhash Chandra Bose's assassination. Clearly, the British saw him as their most resourceful and inveterate opponent. And uh, during the war, they were prepared to go to any lengths to stop him. Afghanistan was the playground of the world's intelligence services. Everywhere, Bose had to suspect a British agent. His cover was about to be blown when he received an exit visa. Bose boarded a train and headed north. His first stop was Moscow. Bose was always very much impressed by the Soviet Union, uh, by Lenin, even by Stalin. And he was always interested to get the kind of relationship with the Soviet politicians. But Stalin didn't trust the Indian nationalist. He feared that Bose might be a British agent. Subhas only received a transit visa and was forced to continue his journey. His final destination was Germany, which had a non-aggression treaty with the Soviet Union. situation had changed fundamentally since his last visit to Berlin. The Nazis were at the height of their power, the masters of Western and Central Europe. Bose wanted to enlist their help in his struggle for Indian independence. 
But in the early 40s, he felt that the old imperialisms of the British and the French and the Dutch were in conflict with the new imperialisms of Germany, Japan, and Italy. And the colonized countries of Asia might as well take advantage of that conflict to press for their own freedom. Within six days of his arrival in Berlin, Bowes requested Germany and Italy to make statements in support of Indian independence. He also demanded money and military aid. But Bowes's memorandum to the German government met with polite silence. Hitler was busy putting the final touches to a plan he'd been harboring since the 1920s. On the 22nd of June 1941, the German Wehrmacht attacked the Soviet Union. Bose was shocked. He'd always seen Russia as another natural ally in his fight against Britain. But the German attack on the Soviet Union offered new opportunities. Hitler had ordered that once Russia had fallen, the Wehrmacht would continue its advance all the way to India. Suddenly, Bose was of interest to the Germans. They agreed to support him with money and gave him diplomatic status. Shubhash Chandra Bose certainly knew uh, about the dark side of Nazi ideology. And I think he was making some kind of a Faustian bargain, uh, you know, in order to end what he saw as the scourge of British rule in India. He was uh, prepared to, uh, you know, even shake hands with the devil. Bose assumed the title of Netaji, which means leader or Führer. He received an office and an organization, the Free India Center, with a staff of more than 30 people. Bose's first task was to broadcast anti-British propaganda to India. With his new title of Netaji, he addressed his followers back at home. When he started his speech, Ami Shubhas. I am Shubhas. Tears started rolling from the eyes of his mother. Bose wanted to reach the two million Indian volunteers of the British Indian Army. These men were the bedrock of the British Raj. He believed that Britain's Indian Army was the ultimate instrument of colonial control not just in India, but uh, in the British Empire worldwide. And therefore, he set out to undermine the loyalty of Indian soldiers to the King Emperor and replace uh, it with a new allegiance to the Indian nation. It was on the battlefields of North Africa that Bose's propaganda activities were most dangerous to the British. Here, thousands of Indian soldiers were fighting alongside British troops against the Nazis. In 1941, the Germans had the upper hand. 32,000 British and Commonwealth troops were taken prisoner. Among them were 10,000 Indians. From his new offices in Berlin, where Bose had been joined by his Austrian wife, Emilia, the Netaji kept a close eye on these developments. His focus was on the sleepy German town of Annaburg, south of Berlin. During the war, it was the arrival point for the nearby POW camp of Königsbrück. In the autumn of 1941, the first detachment of British Indian prisoners arrived here by train. They'd been specially separated from their British comrades. Bose soon paid the camp a visit. The Nataji proposed that the Indian POWs should join a special Indian legion within the Wehrmacht, loyal to himself and to Adolf Hitler. My husband accompanied them as an interpreter, and he explained that the Sikhs, the ones with the turbans, it was always very difficult to convince them. They always started talking about the salt. We eat English salt and we swore an oath to them. Bose didn't react angrily. He said, I understand that, but it's your land you're working for. 
Your land needs to be free, and everything we can do, we're doing it for ourselves. And the Sikhs accepted that. A total of 3,500 Indian soldiers signed up. Though part of the Wehrmacht, their goal was the liberation of India. The National Socialist arrogance with respect to the Indians, that wasn't really relevant for us. On the contrary, we thought, OK, they're different. And maybe they're not what you expect from a German soldier either. But that's why they're Indians. We have to accept that. The Indian soldiers who marched through Königsbrück left their songs here, their tunes. Onward with a determined stride, all joined together. And now comes the interesting part. Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians, all brothers to one another. And that was the point. We wanted to have a community for the future of India. And we were successful. Am Hohen Drahtzaun standen slim, handsome men stood at the tall chain link fence with turbans, very exotic. For us, it was something right out of Aladdin or A Thousand and One Nights. Yes, we were attracted to them somehow. I saw all the Indians and they all appealed to me. They were really very, very smart soldiers. I don't know if smart is the right word, but they were very well-dressed soldiers. They had very nice uniforms. And they were always immaculately dressed. All the girls lusted after the Indians at the time. Me too. Bose's Indian Legion appeared in a Nazi newsreel. Ironically, one of the world's fiercest critics of European colonialism could be seen allied to the world's most racist and imperialistic state. But the Wehrmacht's war against Russia wasn't going well. The chances of reaching India were slim. Bose was looking for new allies. The Japanese were much closer to India than the Germans. After its surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan had entered the war on Germany's side. Sweeping down the Malay Peninsula, the Japanese had caught the British forces in Southeast Asia 